Welcome to another episode of Hereford FC here on Vanilla FM. And today we're going to take a look at um, the, ma the, ch the changes that we made uh, in the winter transfer 2028-2029. Now, this is the second year we're playing in the championship. Last year we finished 20th. This year is looking quite promising. Um, so we are at the moment in 7th. I think it's quite possible we might be able to achieve the playoffs. But um, yeah, it just depends on what these clubs up here do. Um, let me take you through the schedule as well. So the last few runs of games uh, have been really good. I mean, we lost for the FA Cup on the fourth round with Chelsea, but the last loss that we had for the championship was against Wolves, 4-0. We drew with Everton. And now we won against Wolves and we're about to play with Everton away. So it's been a uh, half a year, half a season. Uh, actually, the last episode we had was Luton, wasn't it? So, um, right, let's talk about some of the changes that we made as far as transfers that were. There was one change we made, one play we brought in actually in during the season already so in October this is a player that we had I had my eye on for a, a while TJ Yoma he used to play for Lincoln um, and then he went to Wrexham for a little bit and then he's come to us so yeah he's uh, quite a good player um, and this is in the effort to bolster up our right side of the fence so you'll see that um, TJ is playing in that position for us, is actually playing as an inverted fullback. Um, yeah, so that was one of the changes we made quite early on. Uh, we sold Ethan Boyle for 45k to Grimsby. And then in the winter transfer, we got another player for that position. And that meant that we were able to sell Cole for 150k to Dundee. Uh, so Jair is a Brazilian player. On loan, uh, very quick, uh, also young. He's on loan only for half a season, of course. But um, who knows? Uh, making this connection with Brazilian players for the future. Now, one bit of trivia as well about our players. I've just noticed that if we get promoted, um, and Tyler is still with us at that point, by the way, he's been playing the entire season. I'm just giving a few a few games to Renato as well. Um, he's been playing the entire season and he's done a brilliant job. But I've just noticed he's been with us all the way through. From Vanarama North. All the way through. And he's having a fantastic season. And um, wherever you are in real life, Tyler Dickinson, just know you've got the potential to do great things in real in uh, in real life, I guess. And I think in real life, so he started in QPR, was loaned out as a youngster, I presume. Then loaned out a few more times. Then went to Wycombe, loaned out, and then this is still there. And then in the game, obviously, we got him in the first season. So he was basically being loaned out as a youngster, I guess. A lot, but his club was playing in League One. QPR was a championship. So, so he's back to so he got the potential to play for the championship uh, as the main club in real life. So there we go. This will be this will be good to see a player carrying us all the way from um, Vanarama North all the way to Premiership if we get there. Um, anyway, so those were the two sh the, the only two changes for um, our team. I don't know if you can hear that in the background, but there's some work going on in the flat below me. So you might hear a drill or you might hear a chainsaw or something like that. I don't know if they're using chainsaws, but electric uh, DIY heavy equipment, let's say. Um, so you might hear that in the background. Apologies for that. I've got no control over that whatsoever. Um, anyway, so the only other changes that we got Max go three back in the top team. Um, it, it, it won't be for long. Um, it, it'll, it'll just kind of 
I'm sure next season we'll find someone better. But anyway, he's here for a bit. Um, we still have actually uh, Reese Healy, but he's kind of playing with the other 21s, and then he plays as a sub on the bench sometimes. So we're doing it that way around instead. Um, right, so those are the only changes. The youth team and the under 21s are struggling a little bit. I mean, they've won a few matches, but overall, t towards the end of their leagues, the under 21s aren't doing so great either. Bottom of their leagues. Uh, our youth candidates aren't great. We have one promising goalkeeper and um, not much else. Finances are doing uh, okay. We'll, we'll make that money up with um, solidarity payments and season tickets and so on in the off season. But during the season, we don't really make up for our losses. And uh, that's it, I think. Ba -ba -ba. Obviously, I changed our goal so we could get a little bit of extra income. So it's th disappointing at the moment, but I think we can get there. We just need to. You know, um, have a bit of luck as well. Let's get into this game against Everton. Now, Everton, I think s they're not second. I think they're third, third or fourth in the league at the moment. Let's have a look here. It'll give us the table. We are playing obviously in Everton. There we go, where's the table? There we go, so they're third, and we're seventh. So, the outcome is probably going to be a loss. But, um, we'll see. Let's skip through this and get the game going. Uh, last time we drew 2-2, uh, two, two, like a 2-all. Uh, but that was at home, so I'm not expecting that outcome here. Starting with a goal already from them. This allowed. And um, yeah, so we, I think, are in a better position to get promoted. Obviously we've had one year in this league to build up our reputation, our finances and so on, our, our facilities. Um, so we'll be in a better position if we get promoted to have better chances to stay up in the Premiership. Um, I think we'd find it very tough to, if we say if we had been promoted last year, which obviously we were nowhere close to that. Um, but if we had been promoted, we'd be, well, probably relegated straight away. Because um, our club structure was nowhere near enough to get us into the Premiership. Now, if we do get promoted, our stadium is big enough for the minimum requirements. So we wouldn't necessarily get a stadium expansion. Although I would still push for it because at the moment our gate receipts, even though we have quite high average prices for our tickets uh, the stadium is too small so it doesn't help us cover our losses during the month Okay, wow. Um, I kind of don't want to do that. Let's do it that way around instead. There we go. There we go, that's all the subs for today, for this game. I'm 
really hoping we'll, we'll hold this draw because it's quite important for us to grab as many points as possible because obviously we didn't start the season as well actually one of the key things I think for playing better the last half of the season um, uh, is m morale so I noticed that morale was quite low at the beginning of the season obviously it had to do with us losing games but I started doing a team bonding training session every week um, just to see if that would help with the morale issue and ever since I started doing that they started um, losing games they stopped losing games so um, it's well worth if you're struggling and trailing and etc but make sure you have team bonding so your morale gets better teamwork gets better as well uh, they start to know each other better and um, improves I think slightly division as well potentially so um, it's well worth doing if, if you're struggling a little bit for um, mor morale in your team uh, obviously helps with cohesion all kinds of things so yeah I started doing that every week I think I've got it I've got it scheduled for Sundays in the afternoon session the second session of the day most times sometimes obviously it's a different time if, if that slot's already taken but yeah uh, I've been wondering whether or not to do community outreach I don't really know what that does um, but I'm assuming one of the um, outcomes of that is perhaps increased um, stadium attendance but we are already maxing out our stadium for every single match so I'm not sure if that's worth doing at the moment but uh, if we ever expand our stadium in the future I don't actually know what other outcomes there are for community outreach I know it improves um, what was it I can't remember now that they've it's got a, a description with some with some improvements against it as well but I am wondering if that improves um, not only the attendance but also the kind of composition that you have within your fan base. They might be more lenient. Okay, so that is it for today. Let me just double check that now, the community outreach thing. Because I can't remember what it says it does. So, team bonding. I'll, I'll look at team bonding at another time, but yeah, it says it improves teamwork, so that might be good for us to do. Improves cohesion. Uh, oh, so this is kind of basically this is the same as team bonding. So if I go to a week where I don't have team bonding scheduled, which will be probably towards the end of the season. What's happened here? Uh, cancel. Uh, happiness. Oh, th that's also what I wanted. Happiness, cohesion, teamwork, uh, reducing fatigue. Okay. Yeah, so I, I think outreach does a few of those things, but not all of those things. Um. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway, well worth doing. If your if your team is struggling a little bit, it's well worth doing. Some of those activities added them into your training schedule. Right, that's all for today. Thanks so much for watching until the end. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.